Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and this video is going to be a champion guide for Bad El Kazar. So let's get into it. Alrighty, uh, Bad El Kazar has. Um, been my favorite legendary in the game since I started playing. I've always thought he was one of the best champions, one of the coolest looking, one of the most viable. So um, I was actually lucky enough to finally pull my favorite champion about four months after starting playing. And I actually did it live on stream. So here's that clip. Come on. Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah, definitely an exciting moment for me. Uh, you know, I thought I would never get him. You know, what are the odds of getting your favorite legendary? Pretty low, but I was lucky enough to pull him, and now I'm going to be doing a guide. Uh, so let's go ahead and pull him up here. In the index, Bad El Kazar is in the Undead Hordes, legendary up here. And for all my guides, I have one of these little uh you know infographics that kind of show the optimal sets and then for his grades i've got campaign b minus uh you know he, he's okay especially for clearing the campaign and getting you through brutal but you're probably not going to use him as a campaign farmer clan boss he is great uh arena he's okay he's, he's not bad he's not great he's okay uh can be good in certain defensive setups and, and more sustained battle styles and then dungeons he is an a plus he is amazing in dungeons so clan boss and dungeons is where he gets the most utility he needs lots of speed and then he's going to need some accuracy to make sure he's landing debuffs and then he kind of heals and is based off of hp so getting good hp can be good for him and then there is the masteries that i currently use i will get into them more in detail a little bit later in the video and yeah i will have this down in the video description for you to pull up and take a look at so as we get into bad alcazar we always want to take a look at the base stats we can see uh you know h a good balance of hp attack defense and speed his speed is over 100 so that is great and then uh you know a decent defense score at 1150 and a pretty good hp score at 20,000. Um, the abilities here, an A1, that is an AoE, which is always good, heals the champion and all allies by 20% of damage inflicted. So a very good A1 there. And then an A2 that removes all debuffs from all allies, places two 15% continuous heal buffs on all allies for two turns, places two 5% poison debuffs on all enemies for two turns. An amazing ability here that we can get to a three turn cooldown with two books gonna remove all debuffs so help us sustain and then basically place a 30% heal uh, con continuous heal on all allies for two turns and poison all enemies uh, you know two poison debuffs or 5% poison debuffs for two turns so a great just general utility ability there and then this passive is absolutely incredible Prey Upon is inflict 15% more damage against targets under poison debuffs. And this actually affects the whole party. I did not know this until I got him. I thought this was just, you know, Bad El Kazar inflicts 15% more damage. But no, it is the entire party. It's everybody in your group. is, And poison buffs are basically permanent with Bad El Kazar. So it's just a... 15% damage buff for your whole group. So an absolutely incredible passive there. And then the uh, the aura is okay. Usually crit rate isn't very good, but at least it's 25%, which is a decent percentage, and it is all battles. So I could see a certain scenario where you build a party that, uh, you know, your DPSers only have to get to 75% crit, and I could see getting some value out of that, but the aura is still pretty meh. But yeah, just amazing abilities in general let me pull up my bad el kazar and we'll kind of go over him real quick here all righty so here is my bad el and um i went with four speed and two immortal um you know he's kind of my tank and like the spider den so i wanted him to have a lot of hp and healing and um you know we don't really need to stack a whole lot of damage on him. We want him to be tanky and have lots of HP and speed. We want to get his speed optimally, you know, 
close to or over 200 and we want to get his accuracy if we're going to be using him in the end game we want to get his accuracy right at about 200 if you can get over that great you want to be in that like 190 to 240 range probably for his accuracy in the end game um so right now i've got him at you know about 210 uh, or so um so yeah 213 but um yeah let me look at the main stats we've got gloves that are crit rate i actually do want to switch these um to probably gloves that have like hp or something but you know these were the kind of the best you know speed gloves that could fit in that had speed and accuracy as substats so i went with that but optimally we're probably going to want a, some sort of a of a sustain uh, you know stat here like a, like a defense percent or an hp percent and then the chest here HP percent is great on the chest, and then if you can get, you know, speed and, and accuracy and stuff on the substats, that's great. Obviously, on boots, we're going to want speed and then accuracy and, you know, stuff like that. HP percentage, defense percentage, you know, some sort of sustain. So, these boots are okay. And then, uh, you know, for our banners, we're obviously going to, or I mean our jewelry, our banner, we're obviously going to want accuracy, main stat, and anything else you can get besides that is gravy. You usually want speed. And then, uh, you know, your amulets are a little bit tough to, to get rolled well, but any sort of blend of HP and accuracy is going to be good. And then the same thing with the ring, uh, you know, HP, defense, a, you know, sustain, going to be good for him. So, yeah, we don't need to, I know uh, people get in this trap of this ability here. It's an AoE and it heals all allies by 20% of damage inflicted, so I want to get a lot of attack on him. And that's great. But if you do that, he's not going to have near the sustain for the higher level of dungeons and the, you know, end game clan boss. And, you know, 20 heals by 20% of damage inflicted. This will actually synergize with Warmaster. So, you know, when he's hitting the clan boss with that Warmaster, he's going to heal all allies by 20% of that. So we don't really need to worry about getting his attack score super inflated. We would, I would rather go with the sustain to make sure he can really tank and be end game viable. Uh, masteries so this is kind of the route that I took and again you can check this out down in the video description or, or pause the video if you want to see it uh, forever I'll, I'll kind of quickly go over it but yeah we, we take the, the crit rate and then we work our way down um, you know increase ally speed for e or increase speed for each enemy killed I like to use him in the spider den so this is great um, if, if you're gonna be using a champion in the spider den whirlwind of death is great to get and then, you know, same thing, kill streak. This is great for dungeons in general and especially the spider. And then we want to go with War Master, not Giant Slayer. If we're going to use him against the clan boss, uh, you know, we want to get War Master on him for sure. If you're never going to use him in the spider or the clan boss, maybe you could go the defense tree to give your party more sustain. But I like getting War Master on him to use him in those clan boss situations. And then. Since uh, Battle Kazar places both buffs and debuffs, it's really good for us to get rapid response and arcane celerity so that we're constantly, you know, buffing up our turn meter to get even more speed. And then, you know, obviously we want to, uh, you know, split off into lasting gifts and Master Hexer work very well and obviously good on the uh, accuracy right side of the tree. Lore of Steel is good for him because it's going to help our speed and immortal and HP sets and all that. So, uh, this you know if you do this route here it, it should work out pretty well for you and now let's uh go over i'll kind of do a couple battles here and and, and show you what i'm kind of talking about in terms of battles utility um first let's do let's just do a quick kind of standard dungeon all righty I like to do arcane because it's kind of a, just a normal dungeon. You're never weak or strong affinity wise. And it's a pretty quick run just to kind of get an introductory, you know, uh, look at the champion in action. So we can see very important to have battle with insane speed and, and probably going towards the front of your uh, party's rotation. Because when he places that malice, the poison on the enemy team, his prey upon passive is going to help your team do more damage. So... Uh, you know, very good to have him with insane speed and, and place that quickly so that we can buff the damage of our whole party. And we'll, we'll wait for him to cast Malice. There it is. And now watch. Look at my battle, uh, Kazar. You'll see Prey Upon. Prey Upon. Prey Upon. 
that that's buffing the damage that his allies do that prey upon passive that's you can see that proccing because there's a poison debuff on what his ally is hitting so that is just a truly amazing passive and that's why you see that that prey upon passive constantly you know floating over my bad alcazar because that's constantly proccing as long as there's a poison debuff on your enemy you should be doing uh, you know 15 percent more damage against them and there we go a pretty quick run there and I'll actually show you uh, me using my Bad Alcazar in a clan boss. So we'll go ahead and it looks like my clan is on Brutal right now. We took down Nightmare and now it's time to take down Brutal. And let's see here if we got... Okay, so Tyrell, Steel Skull, Juliana, Apoth should work out pretty well here. Alrighty, so... Um, we got our Apoth go first, our Steel Skull play some defense, then we get the Malice down, um, and, you know, we should be doing, uh, you know, getting the uh, Prey Upon passive to, to constantly go off every time we hit the Clan Boss, which is huge. And, uh, you know, if you're going to use Bad Elkazar in the Clan Boss, it can be really good to get your champions to have a lot of HP, because the, his, his sustain is going to be based on their HP. He's going to heal per turn based off the amount of HP they have. So, you know, defense is great. You can bring a character that busts um, or boosts your defense like a Steel Skull to make, you know, the healing worth a little bit more. But ultimately, the amount of the heal is going to be based off the HP that each champion has. So it is important to get every champion's HP at a pretty good level. And, you know, uh, normally you'll see, like, healers... It'll, they'll heal based off of this champion's max HP, but Bad Elkazar's is actually based off of, you know, your ally's HP. So it's not based off of his. So that's why, you know, unfortunately, you do need to get the HP levels of your whole party uh, to a pretty good level. And just in general for... Um, for the clan boss, you want champions that buff defense or lower defense of the clan boss. You want characters that place poisons. It can be good to bring one character that places a HP burn. So for me, you can see right now the clan boss is burning. That's my Juliana that does that. You don't really want to bring multiple champions that do HP burn, uh, you know, because you can't stack them. So Juliana is my HP burn champ. And then, you know, I have my Poisoners in Battle and Steel Skull, my Defense down in Tayrell. You also want somebody who brings an Attack down, which is also Tayrell. That's why he is so good. And then you normally want, like, a Turn Meter Speed Booster, like an Apothecary. Apothecary is popular because he also pairs so well with Giant Slayer. But, yeah, we can see here that my team is staying pretty well topped off and doing... And doing some work against the clan boss. We've got a good rotation of debuffs going. And uh, also important note that I always mention. You cannot go over 10 debuffs on the clan boss. So very important to. You know you don't want to bring like 5 champions. That place a bunch of poisons. You'll just be kind of uh, you know getting diminishing returns. So it's good to build kind of a good rotation. In your team. And we can see that heal there. You know, healed all my allies by 2,000-something uh, just off of his A1. Just a nice little bonus heal to have. And then, you know, that coupled with the, the, the effect of having a champion like Tyrell that places a decreased attack, it, it, it just means that every HP you heal is worth even more because the clan boss isn't able to do as much damage. So very important to make sure and bring an attack down champion in your uh, clan boss battles. And then at the end of the battle, we'll be able to see how much damage Bad Elk can kind of be expected to do in the end game when you have him fully invested in, you know, ascended, six starred, minnow grinded, and all that. So yeah, um, 
I, I, I hate to have dead air, um, but the, you know these battles that get up to five or six minutes, it's hard to uh, it's hard to talk the entire time. <laughs> so I tried to kind of go over the basics, and uh, I do have a few videos on clan boss. I have one of me soloing the easy boss. Um, and, and then I have, a, I think, a video or two of kind of going over all of the basics and stuff. So if this is one of your first videos watching of mine, definitely, uh, you know, you can get some more in-depth clan boss help in, in a couple of my videos that I have out there. The clan boss is going to start getting really tough here. We're hitting that five-minute mark. Uh, you know, the clan boss just kind of slowly gets stronger and stronger. He kind of ramps up and gets to a point where you just can't quite keep up. But we're holding strong. We're past that five minute mark. We do have a, 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 this party is really heavy sustain and based on just surviving a long time and applying lots of debuffs like your HP burn and your poisons. So, you know, you got your Steel Skull, your Bad L, your Tayrell, and your Apothecary. That's like four champions that are based on kind of healing or, or defense or sustain or lowering attack. And then our Juliana is really our only, like character that doesn't bring any sort of healing or sustain. She's just here to place those poisons, place the, the HP burn, and, and crank out that damage. Clan boss is starting to hit a lot harder now. Chunking my Juliana for almost half of her health. Ooh, yep, and there he really ramped up his damage and uh, basically one-shot my whole party. Alrighty, so there you have it. Now we can uh, kind of see the numbers here. Juliana's a rock star if you can keep her alive. She did that 5.3 million. And then look at uh, Bad Alcazar is right up there with the the you know the best in my party right behind her. Him and Steel Skull putting in some work. Tayrell and Apothecary then bringing up the rear, but they bring a lot of utility. Tayrell with the defense down, the attack down, and Apothecary with the speed and turn meter boosts. So you know lots of utility there, and that's kind of like a, a general look at like an end game brutal uh, clan boss fight with a Bad Alcazar. Alrighty, so that's going to kind of do it for this video. If you have any questions, drop it down in the comments and I will do my best to help you out. So as always, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.